Well, good morning to you all once more and welcome for Sunday worship for the Parish of Acton, St Mary's and All Saints. And today, for the first time for a while, we're broadcasting the service for you here from St Mary's Church in the heart of Acton in West London. Welcome to our service. However you're watching today, wherever you are, whoever you are, you're most warmly welcome to be with us. It's a service for everyone. And it's the first Sunday of Lent. Last Wednesday, we celebrated Ash Wednesday. The service is still up on the Facebook page if you want to follow that and catch up with it if you haven't done so already. And today, as we continue in Lent, we have a, a beautiful service of reflection, which begins with the hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God, Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer 
that we may witness your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as, as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark. Glory to you. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today marks the first Sunday in Lent. I don't know if you've decided to give something up for Lent this year. I've already given up a load of things. Going to the pub for a pint with friends. Having family over for dinner going for a walk down by the sea. The current lockdown has deprived of us of so many things already that I really don't recommend giving up anything else this Lent. But our Gospel reading still gives us some resources for keeping Lent well and, I want to suggest, for making good use of the rest of this lockdown. Every year on the first Sunday of Lent we read the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. This year it's the turn of Mark's Gospel, and Mark is renowned for his brevity. He deals with Jesus in the wilderness in one sentence. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. What does the wilderness signify? Well, the wilderness, by definition, is a wild place. Going into the wilderness in the days before mobile phones and prepackaged food meant being cut off from the rest of the world. No creature comforts, no talking with friends, our normal daily routines stripped away. With nothing to distract us except for survival, the wilderness is a place where we come face to face with who we are. We face our fears, our demons, and we face what we want out of life. Being in the wilderness means being in an environment that we can't control. Most of us need to feel that we have some control over our lives. We develop routines, schedules and diaries. We develop strategies to get everything done that we need to achieve. Well, a diary counts for nothing in the wilderness. Desert places show us that we are not in control. In fact, they can help us to see that we are never really in control of our lives. Anyone knows this who spent the whole day running late because of a morning meeting that went on too long? Anyone who's received an unexpected diagnosis of serious illness 
will know the same things. We maintain an illusion that we are in charge of our own lives, but it is only an illusion. The Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness where the devil tempted him. Mark doesn't tell us how Jesus was tempted, but the other Gospels give us more detail. The devil invited Jesus to make stones out of bread, to throw himself off the roof of the temple and be saved by his father, and to gain power over the whole world by bowing down to the devil. In each case, the devil tempted Jesus to take control over the wilderness and his own life, and each time Jesus refused. Jesus needed the experience of being powerless in order to prepare him for using power well in his public ministry. The devil offered Jesus the chance to make his time in the wilderness easy, but Jesus refused because only by facing the hardship of the wilderness would he learn dependence on his father. Jesus was changed by the wilderness the experience of powerlessness enabled him to stand with those in society who were well acquainted with powerlessness, the poor, the sick, the outcasts. The people Jesus spent the most time with in his ministry were the people whose daily lives were marked with the very powerlessness that Jesus came to know firsthand in the wilderness. Lent offers us the opportunity to simplify our lives a little, to pare back some of the things we use to give us a false sense of control, to side with the poor and powerless as we do so, and to deepen our dependence on God. And the pandemic has had much the same effect on our lives. The powerlessness and isolation I've felt this year has been very hard to bear at times. One of my coping strategies has been to bake sourdough bread once a week. It's a process that takes two days and it gives me a sense of routine. It's also tasty, healthy bread, and I hope to continue baking even when the pandemic is behind us. But I also recognizing that that is one of my coping mechanisms, a way of exerting some control and power over the shape of my week. Jesus was changed and prepared for ministry by facing his fears in the wilderness. And Lent and lockdown offer us the same opportunity. What is your life about? How do you cope with being powerlessness, with, with being powerless? What is really important to you? We can ask these questions anytime, but perhaps Lent and lockdown give us the opportunity to ask them with fewer distractions and also offers the, us the possibility of being changed by the experience. Jesus was changed by his brush with the wilderness. How do you want your life to be different after Lent and lockdown? A friend shared a quote with me recently from the author and activist Sonia Renee Taylor. She wrote this, we will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal, other than that we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return, my friends, we are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. I love that. I love that we're being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment post-pandemic, one that fits all of humanity and nature, including the people who are powerless. We can use the lockdown to bake bread, tend our gardens and watch Netflix, or we can use some of the time we have to think and reflect on the shape we want for our lives post-pandemic. What will be the shape of the garment that you stitch? When in that desert place, in that empty wilderness, 
hearts. There I'll find the man of grace in that barren nothingness. When life makes no sense at all, empty arms I fall. When all those around seek to hurt and cause you pain. No sense at all Into your arms I fall God, throughout all ages you have rescued and restored your people. We come to you for refreshment and renewal. Lord, protect us from the terrors of the night and the dangers of the day. We pray for all who are seeking to know their vocation or purpose in life, all who are trying to work out their priorities. We pray for all who are called to minister to others, for spiritual counsellors and advisors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in positions of authority, for leaders of peoples, and all who make decisions about our future. We remember all who are suffering from hunger or poverty, praying for the work of aid agencies and for food banks in this country as demand rises for their services. We pray for all suffering financially as a result of the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are caught up in crime or addiction, for all who are wasting their lives or giving their allegiance to wrong things. We pray for all who regret what they have done and are full of remorse. May they find new hope in, and courage in you, O Lord. We remember all who are ill, especially those who are members of our church community and those we know personally. 
We pray for their healing and wholeness, and we pray for those who are caring for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died and are now at peace in your eternal kingdom, especially thinking of Juliet. We pray for all who are grieving, that they may be supported and comforted. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible Course is an accessible way for anyone to explore the world's bestseller. Because the Bible is a big book, it can be hard to know where to start. So the Bible Course gives the big picture, showing how all of the events, books and characters fit together to form one incredible story. Whether you are new to the Christian faith or just want to find out more, the Bible Course is for you. Filmed on location and in a purpose-built studio, the Bible Course consists of eight interactive sessions through the whole Bible story, from the first book, Genesis, to the last book, Revelation. Each session combines video teaching, group discussion, personal reflection, and daily readings. Bring God's Word to life by running the Bible Course in your setting. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. God of our journey, as we walk with you on the, your path of obedience, sustain us on our way and lead us to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. With lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels, praising you forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of praises loving God through your Son Jesus Christ our risen Lord as we walk in the footsteps of Christ grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit this bread and this wine may become to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who on the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying take Eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for me. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the world. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Love. renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ 
Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, give you grace to deny yourselves, to grow in holiness, to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son. He is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lord.